am totally fascinated every time you talk because I learn more with everybody I talk. I have um, the pleasure to have an acupuncturist in front of my house now who is heavily involved in Taoism and he's a priest and he has a temple in China and he's American. And um, he's an amazing person. I did an interview with him a few months ago and um, he helps me all the time and so much knowledge and he brings me tea from China and it's, it's, it's incredible the history of China. So little, it, not so many people know about it anymore. It's, they don't and it's, I think it's a bit tragic because um, yeah. Chinese civilization is an extremely um, spiritual civilization. I think it's what, uh, it's the impression of what they've done recently in Tibet that tarnished their reputation in the West. But you know, on the whole, they're a, they're a Taoist uh, civilization. They take care of their people over there. You don't see Dalits and, and untouchables and street people all over the streets. Everyone is taken care of. They're, they're, you know, and when I was there in 1985, there were people from the Chinese government that came and talked to me at times. And <clears throat> they would always say the same thing. We know you in the West think that our communist system is wrong. I would say, that's what, that's what they think. And he would say, well, you see, we cannot let people starve. So we don't, we, we've lived on this land for over 5,000 years. We've been farming this land as a contiguous civilization for over 5,000 years. That means the land itself, the vitality of the land is now, you know, endangered. Although the Chinese know a lot about, they invented composting. They showed it to the Western world, uh, dredging the minerals from the bottom of the creek and and using their feces and everything. They know about all these things and they know all about humic acids for the soil. They are in the process of protecting the tonic herbs because they know that there's propaganda in the West that says the tonic herbs, that Chinese herbs have uh, chemicals and pesticides and heavy metals in them. You know, mm -hmm. uh, For one thing, plants don't really take up heavy metals, so that's a misnomer. But um, pesticide residues are also organic base they they, uh, they they go inert within a few days but um and so all you have to do is wash res any residues off but in any case the herbs that we get are collected from forests from the wild mm -hmm. and now the chinese government in order to protect the reputation and protect the integrity of tcm which they consider a gift to the world they've gone to the regions where the herbs grow and they've traced the herbs back to their place of biological origin which is where we get them so the herbs are grown in the very soil that they, they evolved in, which is an important factor for you know, integrity and efficacy of the herb uh, and, and health and strength of the herb. Well, they've taken those regions and now protected them. They are now UN monitored by world uh, UN biospheres. And so now um, this is more sophisticated than our organic uh, certification system because now if you have a, um, an, uh, an eco, if you have a biosphere, no uh, pollutant factory can be allowed within 100 miles of its perimeter. Mm -hmm. now, or no chemical, no chemical uh, can be allowed within 100 miles of its perimeter so that there is that leaching of the glyphosates and in and the problems we have of seeing with Monsanto seeds blowing into other people's fields. The Chinese are way on top of this. And so they're actually formulating a new designation called D-Dow, which means from the place of biological origin. And D-Dow herbs, uh, and I asked our supplier that you and I both uh, get our herbs from. I said, which of the, can you tell me which of the herbs are, are certified D-Dow? And he goes, they all are. I said, well, how? He goes, because the Chinese government has mandated that all herbs, so all Chinese herbs sold on the market must be designated D-Dow. So, um, you know, so that's, that's a, I'm just, my, my screen went dark here. <laughs> so yeah, um, uh, our herbs are, are picked, in forests, wild, and I guarantee you that these very, you know, these peasant type people are extremely, fine, you know, monetarily poor people by our standards. They go into the woods and walk, and walk miles back there to pick things off trees, pick the Shazana wild, and pick the Epimidium wild, and they will actually, in some, some cases, they'll walk backwards and fix the path they, 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 so no one, there's just do no harm. And they've been doing this for 5,000 years. So if somebody came to them and said, hey, how about take this glyphosate and spray it all over the forest, it'll make you get more shizandra. They'd go, are you crazy? Plus they can't afford it anyway, you know? Mm -hmm. And the Chinese are the world's top biologists from 5,000 years ago. They know better than to destroy the soil uh, of their, at least, you know, of their, of their um, 
their forests and where they're critiquing the wild earth, and there's a lot of efficacy. And then these people collect it, and they take it to their villages, and they, they put it on these big flat wicker baskets and put it up on their, they, t they stick these bamboo poles out their windows on these, those, those um, you know, the villages go up the side of those uh, plateaus, those, pl those plateaus. Fields, uh, and they and they go and the villages are like this, stepping up, and they have these bamboo poles that stick out, and they they slide those big bamboo uh, trays out there to for the herbs to dry in the sun. It's it's actually phenomenal how you know this is, has not been modernized on, on, on purpose because of the, the love that the Chinese people have for the herbs and the integrity of them. Now here's the thing I want to finalize this discussion with. Yeah. It's like anything, folks. If you buy the cheap stuff, you get something that's cheap and maybe tainted with chemicals. If you spend the money and you buy the high quality stuff, you, you look into your sources, make sure that they know what they're doing, find out where they're sourcing from, look at uh, certificates of analysis of this stuff, which shows they're clean. You can be guaranteed you're getting very high quality product. That's the case with anything you buy in the world. You go to the grocery and buy the cheapest celery and you go get the organic stuff grown locally and, and, and pick fresh there's a big difference it's the same with anything <laughs> uh, has to do with energy and minerals and they're all missing on farmed stuff with pesticides so you don't get the same benefits at all and i have your your product tested by a lot of herbalists who took it and they all were like this is amazing what impact it has in a moment you take it but yeah. i never went into that detail with you about how they exactly farm it and you have been there and uh, I haven't, so it's hmm. great to hear. Thank you. Well, to you to discuss your point just now about the efficacy of the formulas that that I, I created your formula your formulas for you, and then I created them based on my deep knowledge, probably from past lives I know, and then my training. Well, here's the thing for all of your viewers to, to see. Now you've got a formula that contains what, about 10 or 11 herbs in there, some formulas, and they have maybe 10 or 11 herbs, 9, 10, 11 herbs. Herbs, maybe five, around five. Herbs. Okay, so they, can, they can sometimes be up to nine or 10, but really more ideally five, six, seven herbs is some mm -hmm. idea. Um, now, here's the thing for your, your viewers to understand about this. They could go out to the, to the health food store and buy a tincture of astragalus and maybe buy a tincture of Don Guai and put that into some hot water and drink that in the morning. That's all fine. Those herbs have their benefits. But the beauty and the power and the sophistication of the Chinese Materia Medica is in the formulas that have been developed over thousands of years. When they found through trial and error over eons that when you combine astragalus with ginseng or goji or or rhodiola, or you know, uh, cordyceps, whatever you you get, the sum is more powerful than the parts, mm -hmm. and that is the beauty of the alchemy of the Chinese herbalism, which could only have developed over thousands and thousands and thousands of years, and that is the gift that the Chinese people have given to the world that is precious, and uh, we save we save people money because we have created the formula based on the proper ratios of those herbs. You use a certain amount of astragalus to a certain amount of, of rhodiola. We know that stuff. We've been trained. So we provide it in the increments that produce the ratios that have the most benefit. And then we are providing this formula for people, saving them a lot of money from going and buying this and mismatching this and that. And, and it's fun to be your own alchemist. I'm not saying don't do that. <laughs> um, for instance, someone could get your formula and, and go out and decide to add some, don't, like a woman, could get your formula and say, oh, I heard Don Guai is good for like the menstrual period and blood building. I think well, I could add a little more of that in there. That would probably be fine because the tonic herbs are kind of like a big salad bar. They, they go together really easily. They don't contraindicate. And many times people ask me, well, when you make a formula, will, uh, will this go bad if I, if I use this formula of yours along with this formula at the same time? Well, no, it's really the tonic herbs are like a big salad bar. You know, when you go to the salad bar, you want to put it all on there, right? I do. <laughs> put everything on there. It's vegetarian. Uh, I totally uh, agree. I have people who ask me if they can mix the superlative beauty together with the holy body and the sensual supreme and they take it all together. I'm like, every one of the formula has six, seven, eight herbs. So yeah. you are making it 14 or 20 herbs plus other things to taste good. 
I just think it's better to use one and then see the benefits of it before you start using another one. That is very important for people to really determine the actual benefits of the formula because, you know, again, we created it with the knowledge of knowing this is going to create this effect. And so it's nice for people to be able to experience that. But then all I'm saying is if people decide to miss, miss, you know, match a little and add it here and there, the tonic herbs are highly um, benevolent and they do not contraindicate with each other. If there was an herb in, throughout Chinese history that was found to have a negative side effect when combined with other herbs, that herb is immediately delegated, relegated down to an inferior class of herbs. Mm -hmm. and so the tonic herbs that we use are the ones that have been proven through history to have no side effects, even when used in combination. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the only thing that we teach people. The herbs have two basic energies, one called yin and the other called yang. Yin means the taking in and holding. It's the female energy, the quiet, the, the receptive female energy. The women are always the quiet one in the room, taking in, holding, receiving. That's because they're going to bear lives out of their bodies, so they, they need to absorb. They're like sponges of energy. To, we call the energy called jing. But, so women are yin jing. They take in. Men are yang. And when we use yang jing, we have to go up and nail, we have to build the roof on the house so that the family is safe and covered from the rain, right? We have to take that yang energy, so we need our muscles toned. So we make formulas that tonify yin, for women, for blood, and then we have formulas that tonify yang for more of an athletic type person, women or men, you know. Or yin formula would be great for a, a vegan, a vegetarian man too, or a guy who feels lethargic, uh, who has pale skin, and maybe, you know, men can get anemic too. So when we make the formulas where they are either balanced, uh, you know, usually the formula winds up 60% yin, 40% yang, or maybe as much as. Uh, 40%, um, 30% uh, yang, 60, 70% yin for the, for a woman to tonify yin to replenish an anti-aging formula, you know, to replenish uh, from excess stress and all of that. After post childbirthing, very good to, to replenish. Um, and that, but, but you never, you never give someone an herb that's all a formula that's all yin. Mm -hmm. because what happens is if you give a woman a formula of all yin herbs, she might get too damp. They said, because the yin herbs they help with water retention and women might start to develop edema. So you put yang jing herbs in the yin formula to make sure that you never throw the pendulum too far and swing the, the seesaw too far in one direction. And that's our job. But they're balanced. A woman, uh, well, a person who's been under a lot of, uh, say they got hurt, say they, they, they were sick, say they were ill, they had an accident, been overworking and they're, de and they're depleted. They take a yin jing formula to replenish. But then once they're replenished, they want to get back out and get back to work. They take a yang jing formula. And that's really the only difference, you know. So if you wanted to say, for instance, a, a person had a formula based on yin jing and one based on yang jing, and they said, can I put these together? You know, actually, yes, it's still not harmful. What it is, though, is you're going to wind up getting replenishment and energy at the same time, <laughs> you know, but it's still not bad. <laughs> Wow, so many things I had no idea about, and it's 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 always great. All right, thank you, Constance. I'll I see talk you. to you soon. Bye.